racist practices and abusive practices, that's the kind of change that's needed. All the changes that are being proposed by mainstream politicians from Obama on down, and I'm a big fan of Obama, not going to change what happens every day. The discriminatory practices, the abusive practices, the things that I just laid out are not going to change or put any kind of um, slowing down of the incidents that we're all too if, often hearing about and seeing on video where, where uh, almost always people of color are being killed without a good reason by police officers. If we intend as a country to change those things and to make the founding principles of this country, including the Innocence Project representative talked about presumption of innocence. We do not have presumption of innocence in this country. It is um, a principle that's given lip service, but poor people of color do not have presumption of innocence on, in this country. The people who are held on Rikers Island who have not yet been convicted, there is no, in practical terms, presumption of innocence given to those people. We do not have equal justice in this country. Not even close. And if we want to abide by, as a country, the founding principles of the country, then we have to take fundamental dramatic steps to reduce the power uh, of not only the police department, but the district attorneys, and actually, and don't have time to go into it, so many different aspects of the way our court system operates and our uh, prison system operates. Thank you very much. We have um, petitions to hand out. Sure. And uh, just pass them around. It's a petition basically calling on uh, de Blasio and city leaders to direct the police department to abandon the broken windows police and abolish the quota system. And there's a place on there to give your email address if you'd like to get mail from us. We put out a newsletter once or twice a month. Uh, if you give us your email address, you'll receive that. I also have a bunch of cards to give out if people want to ask more questions after the back and forth Q&A now, uh, or if you'd like in any way to help a volunteer for us. Thank you. Over here? Yeah. I want to, if you want to put on body cameras, and for a full disclosure, I represent a body camera company. In order to tear away about 400 years of, of uh, police activity in this country and how police police, I mean, it's part of the culture. And one of the only things that we have, I mean, we can talk about these policies that reduce uh, uh, broken windows policies and things like that. In fact, the police have pulled back on that. But one of the best ways is to, to do it is to shine light on what they're actually doing. And body cameras across the country have been able to shine light. We would not even be having this were it not for video being provided in the Garden case, in the, in the, in, where we don't have video, like in Ferguson, where we did have video, that was detrimental to the case. But in the Garden case, even though it didn't prove out, um, in the case in Minnesota, in the case in Philadelphia, since we have video of those situations, they were always body cams. In fact, the police uh, said that their camera didn't come on and things like that. So right now, this city just awarded a body cam contract to a company that has very inferior has a very inferior product. They're going to be filming in standard definition, it has a smaller angle of view, and this is something that the community should be concerned about because they're setting up a program that's designed to fail. Amen. And there are best practices across the country. But the only way we're going to change the culture and how police approach people is if we shine light on how they do it. And video has been the greatest tool that we've seen so far that has at least exposed what they do, exposed the culture of the police department, uh, give people an accurate view of what happened. That man who got shot on the highway with his car was disabled. If we didn't have video of that situation and the audio of what the man said in the helicopter, we would not get the full view. So I wanted to, I want to counter what you say on that because they, I know that we can reduce quotas even if we reduce quotas, that's not going to prevent a police officer um, from approaching someone in a different way. But if we have video, especially with the pre-event buffer you have on these videos, you, on, on these cameras, you can actually see what they're doing and then hold them accountable. I, the, we think videos can be a useful tool. Our view will always come down to as long as police departments have the kind of power they have 
and body cameras does not change the kind of power they have, they will continue to be abuse and discrimination. The videos definitely help in, in, in certain situations, I agree with you, and we would not know what happened in Tulsa. Obviously, in the Garner case, it was not a police video, it was a, a, um, you know, a, a citizen of the city. But the Garner case is a dramatic example. What, in the Garner case, Garner is dead, the man who shot the video is in prison, and the cops who killed Garner still work for the police force, still bringing down a salary. So we, we think that video cameras can play a useful role, but the, 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 the problem, and Abby, I, mean, I agree with you that the problem is institutional culture, but the problem is institutional policy. Broken windows and a quota system as an institutional policy fosters, promotes, protects abusive and discriminatory policing. So that some police, clearly some police officers in our view join the police department because they're already bullies and they're already racist. And even if they're not totally conscious about it, they have some sense that being a cop is going to be able to carry that, those kind of tendencies out. But I'm convinced there are some police officers who come to the job with a serious intent to provide public service. But they're working in a culture within institutional policies that will tend to bring out the worst in people. We see it in wartime, we see it in correctional offices and prisons, and so one of our responsibilities is to create policies that bring out what's good in people, not policies like the quota system and the broken windows policing, which actually taps into the what's, what's bad in people, violent impulses, the impulses to be a bully, the impulses to abuse your power. So, we might disagree in, I think we agree that body cameras when properly used and when the public outside of the criminal justice agencies has access to the footage can be useful. I don't think they would lead to fundamental change in police practices. I, Over here, have you 